Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all having amazing creative days. Today we're going to be upgrading the audio kit for my YouTube channel. We have the Sennheiser AVX ME2 lav mic and then we have a pencil condenser microphone also by Sennheiser. And uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at the lav mic. If you wanna see the pencil condenser mic, check out the video up there in the corner. And uh, with that being said, let's unbox this mic. I'm excited to use this one for sure. All right, let's go. All right, so let's take a look at this lav set. This is the Sennheiser AVX system, and that's pretty cool. I'll talk more about what the AVX system is later in this video, but it's pretty awesome. And the mic that this system comes with is the uh, MKE-2. Sennheiser does this interesting thing where they just sort of plastic everything into place. That is it, that is the, uh, the transmitter, nice and small. There's a rechargeable battery at the front. It's Ah, there we go. So that's a, a rechargeable battery, which I'm not a fan of, I'll be honest. I much prefer AA batteries that I could swap out during the shoot. I have used this system before on a client shoot and the battery got low and then, we, you know, and then even on the receiver it got low, we had to plug in some stuff and what was it, a power bank to recharge it. So I would much prefer AA batteries that I could just swap out if the batteries get low. I think that's a way better option than, than this. Here we have the XLR to mini jack converter, which is pretty cool. So the receiver that's in here, Let's rip that one open. Okay, that's a, a clip. There is the receiver. So yeah, the receiver also has a rechargeable battery here. And it would be cool again, if this was a double A instead of a rechargeable, you can plug a power brick into that so you can uh, recharge it as you're recording. And then of course, if you want XLR output, you use that. Or if you want to convert this to a mini jack so you can use it on your camera, you plug that in. This sits on top of your camera and then this plugs into your camera. And here we have the mic and this is the mic itself. Look at the size of that, that's tiny. That is a tiny little mic. So I'm really looking forward to that because uh, I can hide this instead of having a big bulky lavalier mic on my body. I can hide this under my shirt. I can hide this, I don't know, in anything, probably in someone's hair, hide it in someone's hat and get some uh, some good quality audio with it. But we do have a bunch of uh, attachments that we can put on the mic. And then finally, we have our Sennheiser pouch. I think that's it. Oh wait, there's more stuff down here. Charging cables for charging up your mics. And it's really nice of Sennheiser to give you two charging cables. One for the receiver, one for the transmitter, so you can charge them both at the same time. All right, good fortune has smiled upon us today, my friends. We have construction outside the studio window. I don't know if you can hear that. It's obviously way overexposed, but we've got some generator running, the street traffic, and uh, yeah it's gonna be a perfect opportunity to test the mics. Right now we're filming on a Rode Video Micro. This is a little shotgun mic. And now we're gonna test out the Sennheiser AVX system with all that construction noise. But first I'm gonna give a little silence here so we can hear what the shotgun mic picks up from the windows behind me. I assume you can hear something. All right, so now we're testing with the uh, the Sennheiser system, the lav mic, and um, I'm talking, blah, 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 one, two, three, testing, testing, testing. Can you hear that annoying generator in the background? Now I'm just gonna do a quiet test. Now I can definitely hear it pretty clearly. Both windows here are open and uh, yeah, construction noise. Let's see what it sounds like. All right, just because I'm curious, we are now using my old Comica system. So uh, this is me talking. A truck just went by in the background. I'm using the Comica WM200 lav system. And what does it sound like? Can you hear the construction noise in the background as I'm talking? Blah, 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 blah. Now a little quiet test.
All right, curious to see what the difference is between these uh, Comica Labs and the Sennheisers. All right, test number one complete. Let's move on to something else. All right, so now we're filming at my computer desk. This is where I do a lot of my YouTube stuff. And we are about eight feet away from the windows. The windows are now closed. The construction is still happening. I can clearly hear that generator going. It's been going for two days now and it's frustrating. Um, the other thing here is we have a computer. The computer has five fans in it, five case fans, and they're not loud. They're pretty quiet fans, but I can clearly hear it sitting where I'm sitting about arm's length from the computer. And uh, I don't know if you can hear that now as I'm talking. Can you hear the hum of the generator? Can you hear the computer fans? Now let's do a silent room test. Can you hear anything? All right, and now let's put on the Comica Lab mics and uh, we'll compare the two. All right, and now we're on the Comica WM200 lav mics and we're talking blah, 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 blah. Again, we're about eight feet from the window. Windows are closed. Construction noise is happening on the street. I can clearly hear it as I'm talking to you guys. I can hear that generator going. And let's do a little silent test. Can you hear it? Also, computer fans. And we're talking blah, 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 blah. Again, we're about eight feet from the window. Windows are closed. Construction noise is happening on the street. I can clearly hear it as I'm talking to you guys. I can hear that generator going. And let's do a little silent test. Can you hear it? All right, so we're gonna head outside soon and test this in an outdoor environment. But before we do that, I just wanna talk about a few of the key features with this mic set. And I am super impressed so far that test. Wow, this mic set really uh, suppresses that background noise. I'm really happy with that. So this is the, uh, I guess I'm using it right now, so I can't really show you in hand. This is the uh, receiver, this is the transmitter, and this mic here is the MKE2 mic. Now, Sennheiser makes the same package with a different lav mic. It's an ME2, and the capsule at the end is a little bigger from what I understand. Now, I reviewed that other mic, oh, I don't know, two years ago? Video right there if you want to check it out. So that's the ME2 Sennheiser lav system, and uh, it's kind of cringe. <laughs> look at how I used to do my YouTube videos compared to now. And, you know, it's nice to see that I've evolved and grown and got better. But with that being said, let's talk about some key features of this MKE2. And if you want me to do a comparison between the two mics, let me know in the comments below and I will go get the other one. And uh, we'll do a little side by side comparison to see which one sounds better. All right. So features. One of the big features here is the fact that you can plug these mics into a power bank. So if your receiver or transmitter, whichever one gets a little bit low, you can plug it into a power bank. Now it will not charge while it's plugged into a power bank, but it will operate. So if you need to record for extended periods of time, there's an option for you. The other cool thing is the fact that the receiver has an XLR port and it can receive power through that XLR port as well. So if you're plugged into a professional camera with an XLR output, you know, those XLR like recorders usually have phantom power. So the receiver will run on that phantom power that's used to, to power the mic. So that's pretty cool. When it comes to pairing these devices, it's super easy. I mean, it is probably one of the easiest things you'll ever do. You just hit the power on both of them. Then you hit the pair button on both of them, hold them down for a second. Lights will flash red, then green. When they're green, they're paired. And if one of them turns red for whatever reason while you're filming, it means the connection's lost. But that rarely, if ever happens, unless you go out of range, which you will see when we do the long distance test. But uh, yeah, in terms of pairing, it is super easy. I think that's sort of like the industry standard across a lot of these uh, lav mics now is that it's just easy. You just hit the pair button and it does all the work for you. You don't have to fiddle with channels and all that kind of stuff. But the one thing with this AVX system is it's constantly cycling through different channels. So it's got like a couple channels that it's got, I guess, memorized for, uh, for connecting. So if something happens and there's an interference or something like that, it'll quickly jump to the next channel so you don't lose any audio. Which is, uh, which is really good because sometimes if you have, I don't know, electronic devices close to the transmitter or receiver that are emitting whatever interferes with the signal and you can get choppy sound. So these things will quickly jump to the next channel, which is awesome. So that's a huge plus for uh, this AVX system. Okay, so the main reason I decided to replace my Comica Lab mics with the Sennheiser system is the AVX system. So 
what that basically is, it's like an auto gain. So if I talk really loud or I talk really soft, the mic, the system, the AVX system will adjust the, the gain or the sensitivity of the mic to my voice so that I kind of stay normalized, right? So if I get really loud or I get really quiet, the whole thing isn't gonna jump, right? So I'm not gonna clip as often as I would with the Comicas. If the Comicas, if I talk loud, they clip right away, right? So the AVX system is pretty cool because it's sort of, it's like having somebody, like a sound engineer, engineer your, your audio for you as it's being recorded. So when the camera gets it and it's recording the audio, it's all kind of processed. Now, it's a good and a bad thing, right? So if you're a professional audio engineer, you probably don't like this mic set because you wanna be able to go in there and adjust the audio on your own, right? With this, it's kind of like fully automatic, so the AVX system is gonna do what it does, so you don't have that control. So it's a positive and a negative for me, because I'm a solo YouTuber, content creator, videographer, that kind of thing. For me, it's perfect. I can just stick it on a client, and I know that when I get the audio and I listen to it, it's gonna sound good, and I don't have to worry too much about it. Whereas with the Comicas, it's hit and miss, it's hit and miss. And these have a lot less self noise. I know with the Comicas, there was a lot of hiss, and I had to use a denoiser on those a lot. So yeah, that's the one big thing about the Sennheiser system is that I can just plug it in my camera, I can hit record, I can get my audio recorded, I can edit it, pop it onto YouTube, and I don't have to worry about like, oh my God, did I clip? Is it too loud? Is it too soft? Is it, you know, you don't have to worry about those things. But I will stress one thing, if you're using any of the Sennheiser mics with the AVX system, you have to put your camera's audio recording into manual. The thing is the AVX system will auto level everything. And if your camera audio input is set to automatic, it's also gonna auto level everything. So you're gonna have two systems here fighting with each other, trying to level stuff, and you're gonna get really awkward sounding audio. If you want a little more information about that, check out that video right there. I kind of go through the uh, the process of how to set up your camera and where to set up your, your levels and all that kind of stuff. You kind of want your camera peaking at minus 12 in manual mode with the AVX system plugged in. So yeah, check out that uh, video if you want to know more. But yeah, with that being said, let's head outside. about 120 feet away from the receiver and this is what it sounds like we have a light breeze blowing in the background and uh, yeah this is just the uh, the range test can you hear me is it cutting out does it sound good all right let me know in the comments down below this is the uh, the distance all right coming in clear okay all right Doing the range test with the Sennheiser mics. I'm pretty far from the camera. Can you hear me? Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing. All right, hopefully the audio is nice and clear and I'm not choppy, not cutting out. Hopefully you enjoy this nice view. And here we go, range test complete. All right, just wait for the green light. I'm still going. Yeah, I still go. As soon as it hits green, and they'll cross over. Okay. All right, so now we're rolling. Oh, okay, so now we're testing the Sennheiser out on the street in a busy environment. Testing, testing, one, two, three, can you hear me? You guys can go, no problem. So, can you hear the street traffic behind me? Is the mic cutting it out? Did you hear that honking? All right, Toronto's iconic streetcars. All right, so uh, in conclusion, let's wrap this up. Value for money and who is it for? Let's examine those questions. But before we get into that, check out this lighting setup. There is light reflecting in through the window onto the mirror and back this way. And I've taken advantage of that and put a Godox SL60 video light in there. So it is in the mirror or shooting into the mirror, reflecting back to me with the sunlight. And it's creating this glow because I have a ProMist 1 8 filter on the camera with an ND4. So the black should stay black we should get a lot of nice glow here. So I don't know, how does this lighting look? I think it's pretty cool. I'm always messing around with lighting. I hate shooting the same lighting twice. It's just like, always got to change it. Anyway, that's a video for a different time. Value for money, who's it for? Okay, so let's look at value for money. Obviously, if you've checked the price, these are linked down in the description if you want to go check them out on Amazon. 
uh, they are expensive. These are probably in the higher price range, but I think you're also kind of paying for the Sennheiser brand name. Sennheiser has been making mics for a long time and they're known for like really good quality mics. And hopefully the sound and the audio in this video is really good and uh, they back it up with their product. Now, there are other options out there. You have DJI came out with a pair of wireless mics. You have uh, Rode has their Go and Go 2 mics, which are also pretty good for wireless system. And I haven't checked those out yet. So DJI or Rode, if you watch this video, you wanna send me them, I'll compare them against this and I can do a comparison video. I went with this because I've used this before and I'm comfortable with it and I understand it. So that's why I saved up and I spent the money on it. Now, the thing is, or the big factor for me was like, I hate messing with audio. I'm not an audio engineer. I'm not, I'm not a huge, I'm not very proficient in audio. So when it comes to YouTube videos, I'm filming at least one video a week, sometimes more. And then I got client stuff too. And what I don't like is messing around with the audio. If it's too high or too low and denoising and background noise and blah, 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 and blah. Like, that's just not my forte. I'm a visual person. I like dealing with the visual, visual stuff, not the audio stuff. So with this system, it kind of, it engineers the audio for you. So the, the audio that you get out of this mic set is already cleaned up to a certain degree. Everything's been normalized. The highs are cut down, the lows are brought up and you know, it's all kind of normalized. So in that sense, if I think about like all the time I spent fixing audio with my Comica Lab set versus this. So for me, this saves money because it's just the, the audio is perfect right out of the system and I don't have to fiddle with it. That saves time, time is money. And if you're editing a lot of videos, I recommend these. And who is it for? And you know what, I'll be honest, I think this is for people like me, run and gun filmmakers, YouTubers, one man bands, you know what I mean? If you're just operating solo, just you and a camera, maybe an assistant, small crew, these are perfect because you don't have to deal with audio engineers and recording and all this other kind of stuff. Your audio comes into the camera, perfect. And you can just jump into your editor and start editing and that's, I think that's who these are for, just people who want to fuss with it. Now, if you're an audio engineer, you probably hate these things because the audio that comes out of it is already kind of engineered a little bit and you don't have that freedom and flexibility to do what you want to do. So in that sense, it's not for people like that. It's more for people who just want to plug it in and have great sounding audio and not have to worry about it. So for me, I think even though the price is high, it's definitely worth it. Okay, if you have any questions about the Sennheiser Lab System, leave it in the comments down below and I'll get back to you. And with that being said, this video is over. Peace out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to be talking about that uh, Sennheiser Pencil Condenser Microphone. So that's going to be fun. See ya.